And uh, so I'm going to be telling the children's time this morning, and I'm going to be listening or reading the scripture, and it's all going to sort of flow together because once again, we're on the road with Jesus. Here we go. I found that I needed to add some extra paper to the road because the road's getting long. Uh, so first of all, Jesus and his disciples are going down the road a little bit so that we can see their footsteps. We're almost on the second page of the road. And in fact, why don't we just take the road down to the, down to the end of this paper? I wonder if we're going to have to add another paper at the end of this road if the road keeps going. So you'll hear me read the scripture story right after I talk about this. That I'm talking about one part of the scripture. In the first part of the scripture, and you'll have to listen for this a little bit later when I read it, Jesus and his disciples walk down the road past a wheat field or through wheat fields. So I'm going to put a little bit of wheat here along the road because that's part of their journey. But we're not going to talk about that right now. You can listen for that. Right now, we're going to talk about Jesus in the synagogue again, kind of a lopsided synagogue. So you might remember way back here down the road, Jesus also stopped at a synagogue and talked with the people in the synagogue there, proclaiming good news and liberty and sight for people who could not see. And again, Jesus comes to the synagogue. So he often goes to the synagogue. And you might, might remember from this story that the synagogue is a place where people in the community gather and they listen to stories about God's word. Here's Jesus. So again, Jesus is in the synagogue. And he's teaching from God's word. But he's not the only one there, of course. There are also some people in the synagogue who are called, who are, are called Pharisees. So they're, they might be equivalent to the pastors in, in our church. They're the people who, who, who study God's word and they, and they teach and they discuss amongst themselves and they discuss with people in the synagogue. So I'm going to give them little hats so that we know that they're special. In some churches, pastors do wear special clothes. So I'm going to give these Pharisees some special clothes so that we can remember that they're the Pharisees they're the, or they're the, the experts. Another person who was in the synagogue this day was a man. And what we hear in the story is that he has a hand that's deformed. His hand doesn't work very well. I don't know how to make make hands very well. I don't know how to make people very well, which is why they're just, uh, you know, some circles and shapes. But here's a man, one of his hands doesn't work very well, his right hand. Oh, and I forgot to say, this is the Sabbath day. So this is the day when they would most often be in the synagogue. It's a day to rest, to study God's word, to, to rest your body and your brain and to to be restored and, and be re-energized and spend time with God and spend time with the community. So here we have the community that's gathered and the man whose hand doesn't work. Uh, now these leaders, they were watching Jesus. They, they wanted to be the ones who were the experts and, and teach people about God's word. And Jesus uh, was also studying and teaching about God's word. And so when he came to, this, to the synagogue to teach, they were watching him very closely and they were wondering, what is he going to do here? Is he going to teach something different than what we teach? Is he going to do something different than what we teach? Is he going to follow the rules? One of the rules on the Sabbath, the Sabbath day is, we don't do any work on the Sabbath. This day is only for resting, and spending time with God and spending time with God's people. So the rule was no work of any kind because they wanted to protect that day. And Jesus said, well, hold on a second. I have some questions about those rules and about how we follow those rules. But they were watching him very carefully and they were wondering, is he going to, is he going to do any work on this day? And one of the things he did, he said, I have some questions. Does work is the kind of way we spend that, is the way we work, can we heal someone? Can we do good on this day if the work is good? And so he invited the man to come over to him. And he said to the man, 
stretch out your hand. And so the man, let's see if I can get the hand, stretched out his hand and his hand worked and his hand, all of a sudden he had his, the hand was all curled up and he couldn't use it. But then when he stretched out his hand, he could move it around, he could move his fingers. When I think about the things like, that I can do with my hand, I can draw, I can move it around. You can think about the kinds of things that you like to do with your hands. His hands worked and that made the Pharisees feel very angry. They were, they were angry at Jesus for doing that. And I, but I wonder how this man felt now that his hand was working again. I wonder if he felt angry. I wonder if he felt really excited and joyful about the way that he could use his hands. I can remember God's love with my hands. I don't know if you remember, if you know the sign. And now you can, I'm going to stop sharing. One of the things that I can do with my hand, and we've been doing some signs to, with our hands during our worship. We do the sign of peace. Be with you and we say and also with you and we learned a sign amen that we could do with our hands and one of the signs other signs that I know is I love you so that's something else we can do with our hands all of these things are things that we can ways that we can use our hands to show each other and to show God our love and I wonder if the the man whose hand was healed was feeling that love of God at that time. 